Boy, Janno Circus Restaurant. Yes, I know who be in the Dimba. Dimba Domoro Kara Janno. Domoro Seneata Adiata Topotoro Fanan Kenda Mabige. Luntan During Tamala Abeka Domoro Kijani. Adi Manda Walade. Take away Vijele and Impanan Kafa di Jang Ikonoefa. Eka for Minoko Pestri and in Bakery. Iko Fanan Bekalian. Badé lomba conference lomba workshop lomba ye fo fendi lo dunia kono domoro betama ni lom international oti wada number 1 amanke ba domo la jang dama e sa domo jang is atariya a wo mu ku bandi sa na ko sa futandi e oto sa na ko be mu sikes restaurant ndaba na janna mu yad ni manje do rombi jang aban sikes restaurant known for best quality food and customer satisfaction Ibrahim <laughs> I don't know the person in Gambia. I don't know where. I attack the Tauko Moody in the Javi Walla no GP, the Halantama. Kokano Kofala Kore is a Sangonyamete in Nepa. Mar, a vassal, Pomdete, Kalakore Vidom, a hand to Harno Vidom. Kadi Wanadu Nuntu, them Abidun mobile phones, you got it. Laptop, Kalakoa Rodi, I cast power. They were my Junute. Kadi Savala on Peter de Kovi. Et Google account bound, join in data atom, what I download up my pen, I can't go home to my map at all. The way I might come on away, I don't know. Calaco, I would be there, Minas Eternal Regime. In the name of Allah, the merciful, the gracious, the omnipotent. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you once again to the GMC National Secretariat. Uh, in order to share with you our perspective on what happened in this country two days ago. You are aware that the country is going through a seismic shift, which culminated in a great national shock a few days ago. Many of us are still trying to recover because we cannot understand how you can give birth to your own child and then plan the death of that same child. In other words, you give birth to a child, and then before the child's birthday would even arrive, you murder this child. I think the imagery is very clear to all of you, but it's very shocking. It is not normal for human beings to behave that way. Normal human beings don't behave that way. 
So when we witness an abnormal situation as gruesome as that illustration, it is utterly shocking. And that is why it took some time before we can complete a thorough reflection of the situation. This press conference, or rather the press briefing, is going to deal with one subject only, and that is the draft constitution of 2020. That is the purpose and the sole purpose of this event. Um, I have a prepared statement, and all of you are going to have a copy of the statement to make it easier for you to follow our arguments, because we do not want you to misquote as the case may be. But with a written, a prepared state, you can go and dissect it and do whatever you want to do with it. And the interpretation will be left to the readers or the listeners. But I'm going to read that same statement. I hate reading statements. But I'm, con I'm constrained and conditioned to confine myself to a statement by other authorities whom I answer as well, uh, within the hierarchy, the structure, our own, our own structure, for the fear that you know, I may keep I may keep talking out of my emotion. We are also concerned with the SSR, which is, uh, which is, uh, is effectively uh, part of the reform, uh, reform program. But the reform programs, that is number one, strengthening of government institutions, and three, enthronement of the principles of inclusive democracy. This is the summary of the coalition manifesto. This was the promise we gave Gambians in December 2016. I know this because my party was a leader in the entire process. So we promised Gambians three things. That we are going to reform. We are going to strengthen the institutions of state. That we are going to consolidate the enthronement of inclusive democracy. Because when you combine these three together, they sum up to economic development and prosperity. Constitutional review civil service reform, security sector reform, JANE Commission, the TRRC, constitute the central nervous system of the agenda of reform mandated by the electorates. So far, the security sector reform is anything but a success. Civil service reform has not even been placed on the menu yet. The intentional lack of transparency in the implementation of the Jane Commission report and the intentional great betrayal or the intentional misapplication by some of its most important lessons by the state is deemed a great betrayal by most Gambians. The CRC, 
is by far the most significant policy failure of the administration. Ironically, its monumental failure was directly orchestrated through a real conspiracy by known politicians in the executive and parliament. While the few proxies completed the dirty job on the floor of the National Assembly Chamber, the invisible hand of the main protagonist became visible through the uniformity of their feeble arguments. Their main objections dealt with three concerns only, out of hundreds of provisions, hundreds and hundreds of provisions. Three concerns only, they torpedoed the entire uh, constitution. One, the draft provision on term limits that subjects the president's current term to be computed as part thereof. That is one of their major concerns. In other words, this term of five years should not be included. And their justification was section 100, which is false. Second, the substantial reduction of the powers of the executive in favor of parliament. That was what we voted for in 2016. Gambians told us that the excessive powers Air Jambe is abusing they would not like to see any other president exercise the same. They want power back to the people. And that is what the draft reflected. It reduced the powers of the president and accorded the power to the people through the National Assembly in many important areas, which includes nominations or appointment of senior government officers. They are, in fact, accountability provisions. Third, draft provisions that seek to consolidate judicial independence through enhanced remuneration package, and let me make this very clear. The salaries, the retirement package that is contained in the Constitution is not any grandiose scheme by judges for judges. No. When you go to law school and when you read law at university, you are taught in constitutional law the need for judicial independence and the reasons why you have to get it. And we are all aware in most, if not all, Commonwealth countries, Commonwealth jurisdictions, countries that were previously colonized by England and used the common law system, whether it's Nigeria, the Gambia, or Sierra Leone and others, this is a uniform principle of law that is applicable in all countries. So what the CRC did in applying or in integrating this provision, giving judges retiring on their salaries, is not new in the Gambia, it's not new. It is only new in the new constitution. But judges retiring on their salaries is a famous legal principle in most Commonwealth countries. So it is not new here in this draft. The draft just incorporated what is happening in other Commonwealth countries. So it is not a conspiracy by judges in order to give them fat salaries that their contemporaries are not getting. And the reason is, in order to have judicial independence, we want to make sure that judges are very difficult to bribe. And when they are comfortable, knowing that even if they are retired, they don't have to worry about their livelihoods so that they can dispense justice fairly and adequately equally among all citizens because it is the last bastion. That is why normally in countries, Commonwealth countries, it is inserted in their provisions for judges to retire on their salary so that they will not worry. Even if I, dis if I dispense justice honestly, when I retire, I still have a regular income to keep me alive. But if they have to worry, when I retire, how am I going to live with my family? Then that can render them susceptible to corruption and so many other things. These are one of the reasons why Commonwealth countries, not only here, but this remuneration package is also contained in other constitutions in other Commonwealth countries. So let us get that clear. But they do not understand that. And even where they do understood, they misinform the public about its purpose. So essentially, these are the three reasons. I'm sure if it says the president to retire on his salary, they will not have worried about that. Because all their objections is centered on around one pillar. Now, a forensic evaluation of their main reasons for voting down the bill revealed nothing, nothing but selfish, individualistic, egoistic personal interest. None of their objections are grounded either in law, logic, policy or except personal interest. Nothing. Now, secondly, a forensic evaluation of the minority that voted against also revealed the source 
that orchestrated this humongous national scheme. Let us all look at the three regions that were their concerns. Who do they favor? It reveals who is actually the power behind this rejection. Now, a breakdown of the 20 MPs that voted down against the Constitution. Fire from NRP. It is clear to all that NRP had declared total allegiance, absolute allegiance, to the personal political ambition of the president. They would not have had the audacity to vote against the bill if it did not serve the personal political ambition of the president. Particularly, that the bill in question originated from the government headed by their candidate for 2021. The NRP candidates would not have the audacity to vote against a bill that President, President Barrow sent to Parliament. Who is their candidate for 2021, according to Hamad Ba, the NRP leader, if they do not have the blessings of the leadership? It's simple logic. This assertion was derived from the public statements of NRP leader, including the one he made at Sare Bojo, URR. I was there. Two. Five from NRP, 10 independent MPs, eight previously dismissed by the UDP for anti-party activities, and according to the UDP spokesperson, for advancing the personal political agenda of President Barrow contrary to party principles. This was what the UDP spokesperson said. So their dismissal is very clear why. They are identified and known by the entire country as the National Assembly members nationally representing the NPP and President Barrow in Parliament. This group included two National Assembly members previously on the ticket of the GDC. So we are analyzing those who voted against this bill. Five from NRP, and they have asserted that President Barrow is their candidate for 2021. They will not have turned down a bill that is coming from their candidate, who is the head of the government, unless their candidate want them to vote against this bill. The 10 independent candidates, uh, members, we all know, there's no, there's no, there's no uh, pretense here. And all eight of them are purely uh, on one side. One from PPP, considering that PPP regard themselves as part of the government, particularly when they are representative in cabinet, that is precious minister. He's also the minister responsible for the National Assembly. He dare not vote against a major government bill without validation from the party leadership. So the one from PPP also, let us look at, let us forensically look at it. Honorable James Gomez is the minister responsible for the National Assembly. He is a minister and considers himself part of the, of the borough administration up to now. He's also an important figure, leadership of the UDP. When he said, oh, sorry, with PPP. When he said leadership, I don't mean he's the, he's the party leader and so forth. What we know he represents the PPP in the coalition government and in the coalition cabinet. So it would be very difficult to assume that the PPP also would have gone against National Assembly, particularly when their minister, their representative, is also the minister in charge of National Assembly. One nominated member who acts as the chief, the chief parliamentary whip for the NPP and President Barrow. We know who they are. He acts as the main whip. He speaks with force. He's, a, he's a one nominate, the only nominated member who voted for it. And Honorable Magasi, the independent name of Basel. These are the people who were working with the state, the NPP. And finally, five from APRC. Their vote was one of strategic convenience to achieve a common purpose. It was evidence of a convergence for different purposes. From Honorable Amurinyasi himself, the draft was superfluous and that a comprehensive amendment of the APRC 1997 constitution would suffice. This was the view presented by the APRC through Honorable Amulinyasi, that they felt we should just amend the 1997 constitution and that the 2021 was, is not un, it's unnecessary. They're protecting the legacy of their own party. So it's also for political purpose. Now, this position coincidentally favors the government as well. It is not to say that they may not have sat together and decided let's vote this way. But in this particular instance, voting down the 2020 leaves us with 1997, which continues the legacy of their, their party, APRC, as the Agenda's promulgation team. The role of the Attorney General's Chambers 
and Ministry of Justice. This is most shocking. The ministry relied on the wrong provision of the Constitution. They knew would automatically lead to the rejection of the bill. This is the surest evidence of the government defeating its own bill in Parliament. They presented the bill pursuant to Section 226 of the Constitution, a provision that we submit has absolutely nothing to do with presenting a draft constitution for referendum. It is not the section for a referendum and a new constitution. We are saying that the bill that was placed in Parliament, section 226, they talk about 2264, 2267, all this, the entire provision of 226 is not relevant for the purpose of a constitutional promulgation. It is not, it is the wrong section in law. And we have very strong reasons to justify this in law. So, in a sense, what I'm saying is that the Ministry of Justice intentionally chose the wrong section of the law that will ensure the failure of the bill in Parliament. Mm. It shows executive collision as well. Regarding Section 226, now let us logically start sec Section 226 of the Constitution. The 1997 Constitution envisages it envisages different referenda, different types of referendum, such as Section 63, Subsection 5, including those pertaining to entrenched provisions as outlined in Section 226, Subsection 7. Whereas Section 63 deals with the tenure of the President and his potential removal by virtue of a no, no confidence vote in Parliament, Subsection 5 establishes that any such removal shall be validated by the electors via a referendum without specifying the procedure for the conduct of such a referendum. In other words, the Constitution of the Gambia, 1997, did not just consider a referendum for a new constitution. There are other aspects of a referenda also specified in the constitution. And I'm given an example of section 63, subsection 5. This deals with when parliament passes a vote of no confidence against a president, automatically the president is not going to lose his seat. That Result that vote of no confidence which they pass against the president, if it was unanimous or if it, if it passed the majority, uh, the majority threshold, it has to go to the electorates. It has to go through a referendum for the electorates also to validate that no, no, vote, uh, no, vote, no confidence vote in, in parliament. So this is another, another referendum, but we are not dealing with this because this is very specific. We are dealing with section 223. I'm just giving an indication as to the, the presence of the need for referendum in other provisions in the constitution, not just when you are promulgating a new bill, a new, um, a new constitution. So far, there is no law that specifies how a referendum would be conducted in the event of a no confidence vote against the president for his removal from office. So if parliament were to pass a vote of no confidence against President Barrow today, it will not work. If the entire parliament, all 53, 50, all 53 of them, vote against and pass a vote of no confidence against President Barrow, he will still stay in power because there is no act, there is no act of parliament, there is no law that prescribes how a referendum should be conducted in the event that a no confidence vote is made against the president. There is no such law. The constitution states that parliament should pass a law to describe a procedure for having, that, for having done that. So far, there is no law in the country not in our law books to make that possible. So that is, that is a, one challenge which should be resolved in the 1997 condition, which is not resolved. This issue of the draft condition is another challenge we'll come to again. Reading section 226, it deals with referenda relating to those matters outlined in subsection seven and nothing more. Now, if you read section 226, it is very clear. It refers you to subsection four of section 226. Subsection four, Deals with holding, uh, so deals with altering the constitution, and there's a, a procedure there under specified, but it makes reference to subject to sub, uh, subsection 4, sub, sub, subsection 7 of section 226 of the constitution. Now, when you go to subsection 7 of subsection 226 of the constitution, it atomizes. When you want to alter the constitution in respect of section this, you got a referendum. Section that, you got a referendum. So, subsection 4 of section 226 must be read subject to subsection 7 of section 226 of the constitution. I hope I'm not confusing you. I hope you are following. Now, this is the situation. Now, subject to the provision sub, sub, subsection 221, 
If you go to Section 226 of the Constitution, it is very clear uh, what it says. And we will be dealing with it. I do not intend to argue this case here in the media. But it is time that Gambians understand how the government itself deceived the entire country, including many members of parliament, by using the wrong provision of the Constitution in order to obtain a failure in the National Assembly. And if we do not satisfy the law, people will go with the assumption that things were right. But there have been opportunity to argue this elsewhere before people would make a determination. But in the meantime, the public must understand because when we reach that stage, it will be unlawful for us to mention it in the public. We'll have to follow the procedure. Now, you go, to, you go over it again. The header, section 226 of the Constitution, which the government rely on to take the bill. The heading of that section reads alteration, alteration of this Constitution in, 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 in quoted terms. Section 226, subsection 1, further validates the header, and I read, subject the provisions of this section, subject to the provisions of this section, that is section 226, subsection 1. An act of the National Assembly may alter this constitution. This constitution is my emphasis. So it says, subject to subsection 1 of section 226 of the constitution, an act of the National Assembly may alter this constitution. The word this constitution are not mine. I am quoting them directly from, the, from subsection 1 of section 226. So what is this constitution? Is it the new draft constitution? Or is it the 1997 constitution? We will come there to show the great deception of the century that the state imposed in order to blindfold all of us. Clearly, clearly, as it says, subject to the provisions of this section, an act of the National Assembly may alter this constitution, subsection 1, 2, 2, 6. Clearly, this has every other provision in the entire constitution dealing with the alteration of the 1997 constitution. Subsection 1, 2, 2, 6 says, any alteration to this constitution must be subject to an act of parliament. So there's no other provision in the constitution that would be dealt with in terms of alteration except section 226. Further, this subsection is quite unambiguous as to which document section 226 refers to. This constitution, alteration of this constitution. In effect, it refers to the 1997 constitution and no other constitution. So section 226 is talking about when you want to alter any of the provisions of the 1997 constitution, then the procedure is stated under section 226. This constitution are not a draft. We will understand what is the meaning of this constitution again. In order to make it clear to those who would say, no, 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 if you want to, alteration means cancellation. We all know <laughs> when, you, when you alter something, you don't cancel it. Do you cancel it? No. Nobody cancels anything you alter. You only change it. You change the format. Either you add something or you remove something. But the thing is remain. The thing remains. The only thing, it changes character. The nature of the thing changes when you remove something from there. It's no longer the same. And if you put something there, you added something there, it's no longer the same. But you have altered the thing. Now, when it is about repeal, when you repeal a constitution, you don't just repeal provisions. It's the entire constitution that is thrown out. It no longer exists. Section 226 is not talking about repealing this constitution. It talks about altering this constitution. A repeal and an alteration are two different legal concepts. They are not the same. I hope governments are following me on this. Great. So the section, section 226, and all its subsections are dealing with only the alteration of the constitution and not the repeal of the constitution or the promulgation of a new constitution for that matter. Certainly, Section 226 is not talking about a draft constitution. The word draft does not exist anywhere in the entire constitution. The word draft constitution does not exist anywhere. 
from the first from the section one all the way to the last section, there is no word draft constitution in the entire constitution does not exist. Promulgation of a new constitution does not exist. The word promulgation of a new constitution does not exist anywhere in the in the entire constitution. It does not exist there. Or the word repeal of this constitution does not exist in the entire constitution. Well, if I'm wrong, the constitution is there for anybody to read. Bring it out and tell me show where it is. I am not speaking in my bedroom. I'm talking to the whole world. It concerns, section 2 to 6 is not talking about a draft constitution. It concerns the alteration of the provisions of the 1997 constitution. The word alteration is not technical. It is not technical. Its ordinary meaning applies. If a word is not technical, you see, there are what we call canons of interpretation in law. Canons of inter there are, there are, these are principles that judges and lawyers use to interpret legal text. They are called canons of interpretation. And they have not changed. They are there. I use them, others use them. So if, 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 if a word is plain, has its plain and ordinary meaning, suffices, you don't go behind technicalities. And that represents that you, know, you are a legal mind. So the word alteration we must, must be taken on its plain ordinary meaning. No technicalities here. You know? So an alteration, like it says, like I indicated, the word alteration is not technical. Its ordinary meaning applies, meaning changing any of the provisions of the 1997 constitution. And not the promulgation of a draft constitution, or worse still, the repeal of the same. This contention is supported by subsection 4 of section 226 of the constitution. Because they are relying on subsection 4 also of 2 to, two to 6 of the constitution, which is again bogus, another wrong provision. Because subsection 4 of 2 to 6 clearly states about this, this and, and subjects it to subsection 7. A bill, this contains is supported by subsection 4 of section 2 to 6, which states, it states, a bill for an act of the National Assembly altering any of the provisions referred to in subsection 7 shall not pass by the National Assembly or presented to the President for assent unless blah, 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 blah. So subsection 4 is talking about alteration to any of the provisions. It's not even about altering the constitution. It says any of the provisions, meaning you, know, you can go into any of the provisions that deal, that relate to subsection 7 of section 2 to 6 because you, know, you have to read them in tandem. Subsection 4 of section 226 says, subject to, that is where it says, a bill for an act of national assembly altering any of the provisions, uh, any provisions referred to in subsection 7. So when you read section, uh, sub, subsection 4, you have to go and read subsection 7 again. You combine them and interpret them together. Cumulatively, the result is what you will have. So draw the quotation as to what this constitution is. Because subsection, subsection, uh, because section 226, which they used to go to parliament to present a bill, talks about altering the constitution. So which constitution I, I, I asked earlier? Do we have any support in any of the laws of the Gambia to tell us what is the meaning of the constitution? Or which document the constitution is referring to under section 226? Yes, there is. There are several laws of the Gambia. So there is a law that tells us in section 226 when it talks about the constitution, which constitution is it talking about? Clearly here. Now, uh, this is the point when you want to read and explain. You tend to lose where you stop from. Uh, now, to, now, I invoke, to, in order to bring a nexus here, I invoke the aid of section 3 of the Interpretation Act, Laws of the Gambia, Volume 1. That is, section 3 of the Interpretation Act, Cap 4, Laws of the Gambia, Volume 1. Now, when you go to the Interpretation Act, in order to help you understand clearly the language in section 2 to 6, talking about alteration of the Constitution, alteration of the Constitution, that is changing, making amendments, uh, or repealing provisions of the Constitution. Okay? Uh, section 3 of the Interpretation Act says, Constitution means 
the constitution of the Republic of the Gambia for the time being. Constitution means constitution of the Republic of the Gambia for the time being. And I'm quoting directly from the Interpretation Act. So, 226 is about 1996 provisions, not the entire constitution as a whole, provisions of the 1996 constitution. That is what it refers to. Therefore, any reference to the constitution or to the provisions of any of the provisions of this constitution unequivocally refers to the 1997 constitution and no other constitution or draft constitution. This would only be true, would only be untrue rather, if anyone can prove that section 3 of the Interpretation Act as relates to the constitution was specifically amended. I'm fully confident that this contention is unassailable. Therefore, Section 226 in its entirety, in its, enti in its, enti in, in its entirety, with the, with the procedure, uh, in its entirety with the procedure for the alteration of this constitution, the provisions of the 1997 constitution, and not the repeal thereof or the promulgation of a new constitution. So Section 226 does not repeal, it does not repeal the 1997 constitution, and it does not, it does not provide a possibility of a replacement of the 1997 constitution. In fact, the 1997 constitution does not envisage a change. It does not envisage it would be repealed. If you look, if you read the constitution properly and you go from the preamble, you make a relationship with all of the provisions. It is intended to stay. The only thing that could be done is to repeal provisions of it, but not a wholesale repeal of the entire constitution. That was not envisaged by the draft, the draft in this particular draft, group of draft, draft, draft persons. Of course, constitutions should change. They can even be repealed and amended. I know that principle. I'm not saying that it is impossible to get it repealed because we are attempting to repeal it. But I'm saying the way the constitution 1997 has been drafted, it was not envisaged to be repealed. This is my position. I'm not saying constitution cannot be repealed. Yes, they can be repealed because I don't want people to go out to say, Honorable Mayor Fadi said 1997 constitution cannot be repealed. I didn't say that. I said the constitution itself does not envisage it to be repealed because it did not provide any provision that deals with repealing it. So if there is no provision, there is no law in the constitution that deals with repealing the constitution, then that constitution does not envisage being repealed. Simple as that. The manner in which the bill was drafted, the constitution promulgation bill, the manner in which the bill was drafted and relying on the wrong provision of the law to initiate a parliamentary process facilitated the rejection of the bill. Relying on, wrong, on, the, on the wrong provision of the law, the manner in which that bill was drafted, these two things facilitated the rejection of the bill in parliament. In addition to another, for, another factor, which we'll come to. Uh, Having regard to the anatomy of the nays, those who said no, the nays, coupled with the intentionally wrong application of the law by the state law office, it is crystal clear that the government introduced a bill and embedded within the bill were elements to defeat that same bill. Therefore, the culprit responsible for the rejection of the bill is the government itself, nobody else. It was designed to fail. The lackluster attitude and demeanor of the Attorney General, evidenced through his conspicuous indifference on the floor of the Assembly, is in itself conclusive of executive complicity in defeating the bill. We know, as Minister of Justice, you took this bill to Parliament. Not, not one word to defend the, 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 the Constitution. Not one word. Not one word. The demeanor, well, if you like, that's your opinion. You guys, you want to vote for it, well, that's where it is. You don't want to vote for it, well, that's where it is. No, that's not what a minister of state presenting a government's bill in parliament, that's not the attitude. You go there to defend the policy and tell the nation why this bill was necessary and why it should be passed. We expected a very spirited argument from the attorney general to convince parliamentarians and answer their questions adequately. And not only that, the CRC Act itself provides a possibility to call in the commissioners to come and clarify. The minister should have requested through the Speaker of the House to summon 
the commissioners to come and clarify because they drafted it. And this is punishable under the act. But now he went in there and then, you know, just, just went there, well, you know, I'm here. I'm here. You, have you has everybody seen me? I'm just here. Okay. Oh, that one? Well, anyway, I, when we get to committee stage, maybe I'll think about it. Well, this one, I, I don't have an opinion yet, but we will advise ourselves when we get to that. What is this? Fully unprepared. No, that's not the case, because that was his brief. He was directed to do that. He could not, you cannot defend when you are told not to defend. We will be confronted, but they'll come out. They will say, no, 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 Honorable Maifadi was saying A, B, C, D. The opposition says we were not defending the bill. You know, of course it's very true. They will come out. They'll come out to say, does it make sense for government to send a bill and then the government kills that bill? That's what they will tell you. Gambians do not be deceived by that. When they come out with that weak explanation that they would not go to parliament to present a bill and yet contribute in killing that bill. No, do not be deceived. That was exactly what they wanted. And look at the attitude. Look at the wrong provision of the law. Look at the lack of defense. And then look at those who voted against. Combine all these two together. It will tell you who are responsible behind. The, the death of this, the defeat, not because it's not dead. The defeat of the, of the bill. It is the people who represented the, uh, the executive that voted against it. It is the attorney general who went there refusing to defend it. Not only that, they chose the wrong law to initiate it. So we will be confronted with two fierce responses to the issues raised here. On the part of the state, we should all expect a strong denial with tons of senile reasons as to the folly of an executive defeat of its own major flagship legislation. This then would be loudly echoed by their political surrogates in an attempt to sanitize this insanitizable, disgraceful history. Government will come out to say, no, it's not true. We cannot defeat our own bill. Then their political surrogates will come and say, my father is crazy. You know, he, he has no, nothing to offer you. Hussein Dabo is an old man. He, you know, he's retired now. Why is he still there? You know, Mama Kande is, a, is, a, is an opportunist. Blah, blah, blah. In order to, you know, we, we know that they are coming out with this. But these sort of attacks, in fact, reveals that they have nothing to offer. Because if they have intelligent, intelligent arguments to offer, they will not come and attack the person of my father. I do not attack anybody's person. I bring out principles as to why this bill ended up the way it is. They should bring out principles as to why what happened and how it happened. I'm not going into attacking the personalities of people. Whenever they do that, Gambians should know that the administration and its supporters are bereft of any development ideas. All they can do is to scream and shout and insult people and attack people. But they don't have any ideas. When you want to run a state, it is a battle of ideas. If you don't have any ideas about running a state and you are clueless as to how a government should be governed, then just keep quiet rather than revealing your, in, rather than re re revealing your mediocrity. Because when you open your mouth, your mediocrity will come out. Now, the norms on their part will seek to invoke section 112B in an attempt to sanitize their insanitizable conscience. Those who voted against will, will say, no, we, we, we only use section 112 of the Constitution, 112 subsection B. That is, that states members of National Assembly are allowed in the execution of their, of their functions to use only their conscience and the national interest. That is what section 112 says, 2B says. And they will say that's what we do. But we all know if they exercise their consent, yes, maybe they exercise their consent. But there are two types of consent. Correct consent and wrong consent. Yeah, they can use their, they use their wrong consent. As for the national interest, that's out of it. So it's very clear. Even if they say, they, but that's what we expect them to come, to tell us. And when they come out talking about section 112 b remember, they are deceiving themselves. But because governments cannot be deceived anymore. Be assured, be rest assured that it is all false. No attempt at self exoneration by any of the parties mentioned here should be taken seriously by any Gambian. In summary, we have proven the government's direct complicity in the rejection of a bill purportedly relating to a draft constitution. They intentionally applied the wrong provision of the law and drafted the so called bill in such a manner as to facilitate its rejection by their allies in the National Assembly. We will go further to assert that there is no provision in the 1997 constitution, the entire 1997 constitution, 
dealing with the promulgation of a new constitution. It is not there. The whole 1997 constitution, there is no, pro no section that deals with promulgating a new constitution. Section 226 talks about altering the provisions of the existing 1997 constitution. It did not talk about replacing the 1997 constitution. Alteration is not a replacement of the entire document. It's, it, it talks about provisions, sections. If you go to sub, subsection 4, it says, well, you go, go and look at subsection 7. These are the provisions where you need a referendum. It is clearly there. The cumulative effect of section 226, subsection 1, section 226, subsection 4, section 226, subsection 7, section 226, subsection 8 and 9, and section 3 of the, of the um, Interpretation Act conclusively support, strengthen and corroborate this contention. I am not aware, however, I'm not, however, oblivious of Act number 33 of 1965. What they do not know, or what they know, but they, they, they refuse to advert their attention to. In the laws of the Gambia, in the laws of the Gambia, there is an act of parliament that deals specifically, it is called Constitution Referendum Act. Constitution Referendum Act. So that act is very clear. It talks about Constitution Referendum Act. That is what I'm talking about, Act Number 33 of 1965. So we have a law in the laws of the Gambia that will specifically with referendum. But that act also did not go in detail as to how it should be done. It only talks about the role of the IEC. Let me keep quiet before I tell them what to do. Before I, 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 uh, I give them clues. So I, I will stop after that. I am not, however, oblivious of that. The anatomy of the nay votes, those who needed vote, who voted no, points to one inescapable conclusion, a conspiracy to defeat the so-called bill in the National Assembly. I can already hear the nay side. Well, then assuming there are no provisions in the 1997 constitution for its repeal and the promulgation of a new constitution, how would the draft be referred to a referendum? How would the draft be referred to a referendum if there is no provision to refer to a referendum in the 1997 Constitution? Then how can you refer to a referendum? <laughs> I am not a legal advisor to government or an employee of the Ministry of Justice. It is for the Attorney General and Minister of Justice to answer that question. The law is clear. I am not going to say that. But I know how it can be done. I assume you should know also. That's why they are misleading us. We will provide our answer at the appropriate legal forum. Any determination by that forum will also be subject to the verdict of Gambians. Not only that, posterity will also be the judge of the judges, either through condemnation or commendation. In conclusion, we hold the government directly responsible for the rejection of the so-called bill. We conclude that there was no sincerity on the part of the government with regards to the entire reform program. We assert that the reform mandate upon which the coalition emerged victorious at the polls in December 2016 has been torpedoed and in its place the rejected agenda of the consolidation of the status quo ante has been granted new accelerated engines. This is the great betrayal that history will talk about for eternity. As a party, we have put a process in place that will entail the input of others on this matter. So I will not make a unilateral declaration to avoid undermining that process. I can assure you, however, that we shall defend the national interests, ensuring that the draft constitution continues to live. It is not dead and will never die. We will be keenly observing the nature of the frustrated response from the other side. We are anticipating that they will utilize the excessive powers of the incumbency to try to overreach. Let me say this. If you do not learn from the lessons of the TRRC, go ahead and misuse such powers of incumbency. Go ahead and misuse them against the people. If anyone within the ranks of the armed and security institutions allow themselves to be used against the opposition for political reasons, be ready to do so at your own future peril. Unless if you die before another government is established, 
regardless of who leads that new government. I can call on security institutions to perform their duties in accordance with the law. I call on the Ministry of Justice not to allow anyone to use the ministry or its staff to adversely use the law against anybody for political reasons. History is recording. Another day of reckoning will come without fail. You do not want you or your family to be placed at a difficult situation in the future. It is not worth it. Do not allow a temporary position in government to destroy the rest of your life and your family's life. I call on all Gambians and friends of the Gambia to support the completion of the Gambia's democratization process, which has been derailed. We did not end a system of brutal dictatorship in lieu of a benevolent dictatorship. The priority of the Gambia today is the reform and strengthening of institutions of state, reform of the governor's architecture, and building of a strong economy for inclusive prosperity. These priorities have been put at, at the back burner. self perpetuation and development projects intended to hoodwink the public so as to secure the sole goal of perpetuation are on course. Every project is first calculated in relation to its relevance for 2021, and any benefit to communities is merely incidental. Development partners should allow themselves, should not allow themselves to be unwitting partners in this skewed agenda. The copy you will have will say development partners should allow themselves. It should mean should not. So you take note of that. Should not. That is the last sentence, uh, so the second paragraph. Development partners should not allow themselves to be unwitting partners in this skewed agenda. Now, let me address my friend. I want to address my friend, President Barrow, directly. We know each other for a long time. <coughs> when we knew each other, none of us knew we'll be in this position today. We were not married, we were young. We did all the follies of young teenagers. We supported each other along the line. Being a friend, I have known you to be a very reliable friend. Before politics would come, you were somebody anyone can depend on. I knew I could depend on you as a friend. We have our mutual friends when you were in the United Kingdom. You remain with our common friends. And they too could rely on you as much as you could rely on them. When you return home, you were kind enough to reconnect again. While I was practicing law in my chambers, you came with a great ambition that what you could do in England, you could do here in the Gambia. And we all encourage you. You created a company. We supported in the creation of that company. I was among the first people also to give you business. We were renting properties. We had difficulties with, with, with tenants, with, with uh, some tenants at one of, one of our properties. To support you as a friend, you know, we gave you, we supported the business. And you have always been honest with money. Before Polo, this is how we knew you to be. We get involved in each other's personal family issues. We come from a long way. We got into politics. I also got into politics. At some point, I had to leave this country because I was, that was an attempt on my life. I almost died. I survived assassination. I was afraid to come back so that they would complete their job. So I stayed outside to fight, working with forces on the ground to kick out the dictator. At some point, I called you. I said, look, you are a friend I trust. And I know you will not betray me. You will not betray the people based on my experience working with you and knowing you as a friend for a long time. So I am proposing the idea of entrusting the leadership of GMC to you. If you agree with me, then I will discuss with my, with my party representatives on the ground. But I want you to become the leader of GMC and be the candidate for GMC. This was well before any of these coalition things would come. I think this was, this was the year 20, 2013. 
2013, 2014. Many years down before we get to 2016. I want you to take over the party. So obviously, I was the first person who wanted President Barrow to become a president. And I'm speaking this for the whole world to hear. He will hear also, and he will agree with me what I'm saying is true. I spoke to him because I have known him as somebody I can trust, as a friend who loves me, whom I love as well. And based on his honesty and integrity that I knew at the time, he said, well, why don't you take over the leadership of the party? You agree? Then I will discuss with my, members, with my party members on the ground. If they agree, you know, then we go, we go through the party processes, and you lead, take over the party. So it would be wrong for anybody to say, I don't want President Barrow to become president. Because I was the first person in the whole world who gave him the opportunity to contest election for president, even before UDP would do so. And not only that, I made it very clear, since Yaya Jambe excluded me by law, he passed a law, Elections Act, that made it impossible for me to be a candidate in the elections, because it was intended for those who are outside. He said he must be five years permanent in the country. If you are not here, you cannot contest. Number two, you cannot even be a member of your own party's executive. That was an amendment to the, 19, 19, uh, to, the, to the Elections Act. New provisions intended for people like me, exclusively people like me in the diaspora. So for me, I have nothing to do with the Ajam again, except to fight to kick him out for the national interest. So when President Barrow proposed, when he was proposed to be the candidate for UDP, I was among the first people he called also. Well, UDP, you know, is selecting me. And I landed first on social media when they wrote it down. My people on the ground called me. I could not believe it. I was trying to reach him. I couldn't get him. I saw it on social media. It was written down. True. UDP wrote it to say it's true. Then I went to support him publicly in social media and said, those of you who say you don't know President Barrow, I know him. He's a grassroots person. He's very unassuming. The guy has integrity. Support him. I was among the first to support him, even though everybody was, some majority of governments were questioning, who is this guy, who is this guy? Including members of, the, uh, members of the UDP. Not only that, I made up my mind, then I'm going to go return back to my country, even if I was going to be killed, to go and campaign along President Barrow and others, so that we can kick this dictator out. So when he called me, I promised him one thing. I said, look, Mr. President, you don't need to campaign to me. I know you. You and I should join together and campaign orders to bring them on your side. I am not a person you should, you should pitch to. So I joined him to campaign on other people's side in order to get them to join him with the EDP. I will end the story there. The rest you all know how hard GMC worked in order to end the regime of Yajame and during the impasse our great effort at diplomacy. Some of you live in Dakar with us. So you can you are among, among those. During the impasse, whatever happened, the efforts we did, God knows, President Barrow knows. The government of Senegal also knows. For you, even you can not know. So, President Barrow, I'm appealing to you. Accept this constitution. This is your legacy. We have invested a lot of money. You cannot take more lataro, $116 million, and dump it outside in the interest of securing term limits. When you become president, nobody expected this. This was a part paid for you by God. He did it, you did not beg him. Do not force the hand of God. If you force God's hand, it is very heavy. It's going to crush you. You will be crushed. Be very humble and accept the time that God has given you. Five years. Do you even know whether you are going to live for five, for before 2021? Nobody knows it's the hands of Allah. Why are you going to destroy an entire country in the interest of time limits? The consistent amount of destroying the country, this draft. I appeal to you as a friend, as a brother. I have not changed. If I move away from you, it will be because I have principles that are for the national interest. You will say you are for the national interest. But the public will judge. Which national interest is, is, is clearly the national interest? So I am for the, 19, uh, the 2020 draft. Fully, I have made this very clear. But you are not for it. So you and I, we have a departure point here. And we will depart from these points. Maybe we will agree on some other things in the future. 
But this is where we differ. And we are going to defend it. And we are ready for you and your government to come after us. And whoever does, we will defeat you. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you this assurance, this assurance, that 2021, by the grace of Almighty Allah, if you all would live to witness it, 2021, the only government, that will win, that will be installed, is going to be one that will be led by GMC. GMC is next government. You are media journalists, write it down. We are very confident of our strength on the ground. You know, people make noise. When you are moving slowly, you don't make noise. When you are moving pretty fast, all the noise will come around. We are not in that noise. We are moving, we are moving cautiously. So you are not going to see our dust. You will not see the dust. You will realize it just like sleep comes to you. You wake up in the morning, the Republic of the Gambia, the new government, under the leadership of GMC. I thank you all for coming. May God bless the Republic of the Gambia. Yes, first question. Yes, first question. No, let, let's, let's give a chance to a lady. Lady starts. Uh, thank you. Good evening. I am Aisha Majar from Gambia. I know Gambia, yes. Yes. Anas Majar, but. In your statement, you explained the relationship you have with that before And in 2016, when coalition had their Congress at Kairaba, almost all political parties, including the NC, added their bid and voted for Baro, giving him a landslide victory over Halifa Sala. So my question is, don't you have any regrets picking Baro over Halifa Sala? When you knew deep in your heart that probably Halifa Sala was more presidentially, more experienced, and more qualified to deliver the coalition again. Look, uh, let, me, the second let, one, let me just answer that first. You see, I'm not going into those who want to see one political party leader against the others. You see, those who are Gambians, who want to say, well, Halifa's camp, Usuri Dabo's camp, my father's camp, I'm not involved in that. I'm looking at the country. Today, this press conference is about the Gambia. I believe at the time strongly that President Barrow, supported by a strong team, will be able to lead this country out of the dictatorship. That was what I believed at the time. And that was my conscience, and I believe that. Honorable Halifa Salah is also a very good man. I have known him since school days as well. He knows me too since I was a student. During my, uh, my Moja, Moja days, during the Jawara regime, he knows me, I know him. I know Sida Jata, all of them. And not only that, I know a lot of Honorable, uh, Honorable Salah's circle. So I have a tremendous, great respect for him. And I know he is capable to be a president of the Gambia, a good president for that matter. So I'm not going to stand here to say, you know, A and B, A and B. I know where this is coming from. They always come to my page on Facebook and write the same thing there. They say you are responsible for this. You know Halifa is better. Okay, 2021, go and vote for Halifa. For God's sake, leave my Facebook telling me Halifa is better. Go to the polls and vote for Halifa. Thank you very much. What is your reaction to people that believe you should be held responsible? Why should I be responsible? Why should I be responsible? If, even, let me finish. Even, even, even if I supported Barrow, I have only one vote. It is the Gambians who voted for him. So, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Halif Asala also encouraged because he campaigned for President Barrow. Halif Asala campaigned with President Barrow in every village in this country. Every constituency he went to, Halifa was there supporting and telling people, vote for Barrow. So, so, so what are you going to tell, uh, what are you going to tell uh, Halifa? Why did you vote for, for, why did you campaign for Barrow? Go and ask Honorable Halifa Sala why he campaigned for Barrow. Because he campaigned for him. The, the same reason Halifa campaigned for him, uh, the same reason I also campaigned for him. So if Halifa is guilty, I'm also guilty. If I'm guilty, Halifa is guilty. But you cannot say Halifa campaigned for him. He's not guilty. My father campaigned for him. We are guilty. I'm not into that. Oh, it's enough. No, no, excuse me. No, 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 wait, 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 this is not, it's not a dialogue, it's not a dialogue, no, 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 let me come to order, no, let's come to order, can we give chance, please, give chance, yes, 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 thank you very much, honorable Mike, your deliberation is well, 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 clear, it's explicit, we have it, so my question, yesterday we attended at Amba, the same place come, for example, from the leader of the Secretary General of the United Democratic Party. And today, when I got news that you are coming up, I was confident that you will hear an argument, and that's what I expect. So, but my 
question to you is, I will ask two questions, and my first question is... Each question. one will ask one question first. Yes. Then we can come to the second exactly. round. Only one question. Yes. Uh, yesterday, uh, a leader of a political party was so dissatisfied with the performance of the current Attorney General and Minister of Justice when this um, uh, team, uh, the support reading of the, um, uh, of, the, of, the, of the draft constitution was tabled at the National Assembly. Um, uh, today, you are also explaining the same thing that the minister could have done better to defend and advocate for the promulgation of the December draft constitution at the National Assembly. So now that the parliamentarians are dissatisfied with the agreement of the minister or entirely with the draft constitution, what is the way forward? Well, well, like I indicated in my statement, we have put a consultative, pro a consultative process in effect. I am not going to stand here to tell you unilaterally this is the way ahead, because we are in discussions with partners, and those discussions have not been concluded. Now, if I give any specific answer as to this question, I will be undermining that process, because I don't know what would be the consensus of the rest of those in the consultation as to the way forward. That is what I can say as regards to that. Yes, right now, uh, I think one question. Everybody has one question. Let me answer the question. Yes. Um, there should be no confusion here. What I'm saying is that uh, really 226 is the wrong section of the law. And I believe that the Ministry of Justice, I don't know General but they have an army of lawyers there. They have a whole army of lawyers. I believe, I think, if they really seriously want this bill to be passed, even with all its legal defects, they would have instructed their surrogates to vote for it. They would have instructed their surrogates to vote for it. Clearly. So it shows that they, do, they want the bill to fail. Now, as to which is the relevant law, it is there. But I'm not going to throw that, that bomb here. There is going to be another, another forum where that will be necessary. So I'm not throwing everything here now. But I know the ministry should advise themselves again. And I'm urging President Barrow to reintroduce this bill, uh, another bill, under the correct provision of the law, which I believe the Minister of Justice, I don't know, should know. Yes, they know. Yes. They know. Honorable Thank President. you. Yeah, um, Honorable. Yes. My name is Uswad Awadi, at last generation chief. CEO. Uh, <laughs> Director General. So, um, Honorable, I want to commend you for your well articulated deliberation. I will call you my landed honorable. That's how you call each other in the court of law. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, I just want to ask you about this question because it's a very hitting question at the moment. Mm -hmm. That is the involvement of foreign powers in the internal affairs of the country. Because yes. we are nationalists. So we will love our everything to be done by the governments. In as much as we want our constitution to be uh, pass to referendum, but it has to be sold out on the citizens of this country. What is your reaction towards that? Well, it's, it's clear. You know, there's a lot of hypocrisy, uh, you know, even among Gambians themselves. When we were fighting with the Ajami and wanted him out, the EU, they issued a statement. We all clap for it. Oh, EU says, even you say Ajami should go. The Americans, they said he should go. Oh, yes, even America said the Ajami should go. The Germans, I was involved in the international diplomacy when we were working hard to get the UN to give us the support. These were the countries we used in order to get the members of the Security Council to support us. Nobody said, America, EU, please get out of our business, don't get involved. Everybody was happy. Why did they condemn the US or this, their statement? They gave joint statement, didn't they give a joint statement? They did give individual statements. They also gave joint statements during the impasse. The American ambassador was a frequent guest of ours. I had countless meetings with him, with Harada. So was the, EU, the current EU ambassador, 
when they came to offer us over 200 million uh, uh, euros, our first meeting at Yarambamba, when he came there first in order to give uh, to, for the EU to, to uh, open again development cooperation, we all clap. Nobody says, ah, please, can you take your money out of here? And when it, EU, the EU commissioner for, for aid came, and he gave 11 million for YEP and other things, nobody says, look, don't interfere in our business. Did anybody say that? Nobody said so. And many, many more reasons. Many, many more. When they support us, and this support is consistent with our interests, we say thank you. And when some of us don't like what they say, we say go to hell. This is their attitude. He expelled them, he said go to hell. We don't want to repeat that again. The world is a global village. And there is no true concept of sovereignty. There is no country that is truly sovereign today. The global, there is global interdependence. And due to treaties, international law, and all these changes, nations will interfere in other nations' affairs. Why did, the United, why did we call the European Union and all these foreign countries to help us in getting rid of our Germany? We are members of the United Nations. The UN Charter is specifically clear. It says every country must respect fundamental human rights. That is what is in the, uh, in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Is that not a treaty, like a contract, that all countries sign, all member countries sign in the, uh, uh, all con member countries signed um, uh, to each other? Universal Declaration of Human Rights is like a contract each country sign. We are going to respect fundamental human rights in our country. So if you have a contract with the world, and you violate that contract, and you say the world should not come and talk about that contract, you're making a fool of yourself. You can have your cake and eat it. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Ah. I am Sadia Rachel from the Fatu Network. Yes. So the white teams were prioritized from the onset. Um, mines were made, and obviously it was apparent that there was no turning back from the members of our parliament. Now, fast forward to the rejection of the draft of constitution. Some people actually believe that this was never about the constitution. This was just a big standoff between MPs who support, let's say, the current government and the others. Now, honorable, um, yesterday we watched the, the press conference of the United Democratic Party and we heard Davo actually accuse the president of having a hand in the rejection of the draft constitution. Now, if in fact the president had a hand or mastermind the rejection of this draft constitution, what does that mean for our transitional justice process? What is that to ask? What exactly do we vote Jammeh out for? Whew. No wonder you are my star. Well, let us, let us make this clear here. Uh, let's make this very clear. First and foremost, um, there is something called direct evidence. You know, even you got a lot of evidence, different types of evidence. Now, there is something called circumstantial evidence. And even on strong circumstantial evidence, the court will convict. The court will convict when the circumstantial evidence is strong. So here, nobody has direct evidence. Nobody can say clearly, I was there. President Barrow had a meeting with these people. This is what he said, he said. I know there are people who could say that, but you know, many people outside cannot, cannot confirm, in fact, that you know, there was a meeting of the mind for this to happen. But you know, look at the circumstances surrounding the rejection of the bill. The eight members of parliament that were dismissed by UDP because they are affiliated to President Barrow. And they became independent and they continued their affiliation, affiliation, affiliation with the uh, NPP. I mean, they will not fool us and nobody will pretend not to know that these are MPs for, for, for the NPP in parliament now. We all know that, that is clear. And then the rest, and then the rest. So when you look at all the circumstances, I'm confident that if the president wants this bill to pass and he do not want the derailed, these are people. Honorable Alhamdi Conte is my special advisor. Uh, Tida Kijera is a member of my executive. I'll tell them, look, this is my bill. I want you to support it. They will go to parliament and support it. When I say GMC, this, this bill is against GMC. It doesn't serve our interest. They'll go there and say, no, we are not going to vote for it. So if President Barrow wants these people to vote for the bill, they would have voted for the bill. And I'm not saying that President Barrow tell them go directly. I'm saying the circumstances suggest. That's what the circumstances suggest. And I disagree that these members of parliament voted their conscience in the national interest. They did not vote their conscience. They voted something else. In fact, they left their conscience at the door, outside. Not even outside. They left it somewhere in the street before they got inside the, the, the whole chamber. That is one. So, so really, um, if the circumstances point out to the one who orchestrated this, and we think we know circumstances who this person is, uh, then really, I think it's a major disappointment. And I would support the contention that it would be time for the government to go, and go as soon as possible. Yes, 
follow-up question. A follow-up. Let me make a follow-up. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Right. No, no. You, you cannot make. You cannot make follow-up for Patrick. Yeah, no, no. You know, it's allowed in general. I, I know, but you had your cake. Yeah, no problem. Let, let other people. Let other people have the cake also. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, Omar. Omar, my, Omar, uh, my brother. Connected to um, her, her, her affection. Yes. Um, and this one, of course, has to do with the, uh, has to do with the uh, rejection of the trial. Um, of course, um, the disappointment cannot be measured among, among governments, especially those who supported uh, the trial from the initial point. Uh, but now one will begin to wonder uh, mm -hmm. what would happen next. Um, this is a government that has, that has spent uh, nearly a billion, a billion, a billion yes, a billion. these reforms. Yes. Uh, from the uh, TRRC, the Janet Commission, uh, which was also, uh, of course, a play, a playbook uh, in terms of uh, the way government reacted to uh, the recommendations of the Janet Commission. And um, as we speak now, governments are wondering, uh, do we uh, still, in fact, need the continuation of the TRRC if this is what we are seeing from this borough administration? Um, and given the 2021 election is just at the door, and you know the perception that is given around, around the country that this, uh, the of course NPP is in a in a plot to have a whatsoever coalition with the APRC, and we know the TRRC is directly um, 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 affecting will directly affect um, the APRC former APRC members and of course its former leader. Okay. Um, what will of course what does this mean uh, for the reforms in general and for the change in particular? All right, uh, like I indicated earlier, I, I quite agree with the tenor of your questioning and, uh, because it is suggestive of the answer. Uh, it is clear that 20, 20, uh, 2016, the mandate we have was one of reform. Reform, make the changes, and consolidate our democracy. And we came in on the reform agenda, we started the reform process. Uh, but I can assure you, based on the empirical evidence, based on what we see in play, um, the SSR, I started it as Minister of Interior, we, uh, president was at Fajara at the time. The SSR, SSR is nothing, we, we have, can anyone tell me the state of SSR? Nobody in this country knows where it is now. So we are not even talking about, the SSR, SSR is, is, is bungling, we all know. And there is one reform program. Then we talk about the Ghana Commission. We see the recommendations. So certain people should be removed from government, certain people, it's not there. Government came out with a white paper, in fact, acting against the recommendations of a commission they themselves put into effect. Ghana Commission, uh, so that some people are put on the path, oh, old boy, uh, very well, very well, but don't do it next time, okay? Next time, don't steal too much, and next time, you know, don't, be, don't take too much, all right? Just uh, be careful, we keep you here. So this is what we have seen with regards to the Ghana Commission. It has also a failure in terms of its implementation. Even the sale, the sale of the property of President Jame, the former president, there's no transparency. Nobody can tell you what happened. No transparency. You know, there's a lot of questions surrounding it, you know, and nobody knows what is happening. So that is also a failure in part. And then talk about civil service reform. The government is not even interested in civil service reform because there's nothing about civil service reform in any of their programs so far. Well, they mentioned it by lip, but there's nothing to show that it is there. Now, we talk about the CRC. The government made sure that they killed the bill in parliament, which is also a failure. So nobody has hoped that the, TR the TRRC will work. So in other words, the reasons why the government voted for us, that reason has now been destroyed. Now we are on a new reason that has been invented by others after the map, after, you know, after thought. So this is where we are. What we're saying is that the effect is governments are disappointed. God, Allah is disappointed. And you all know when Allah is disappointed. We will see 2021. Yes. Uh, I will not ask, I'll, anybody who has a question will not ask until everybody else exactly. asks. Or, or, or if, there is, if there are no further new questions. Yes, we can no, no, no. Anybody else who did not ask? Anybody want to ask? ask? Yes? No. Okay, well. Let's argue. Yes? Yeah. Um, no, no, we are not arguing. No, no, let's. Uh, I want to make a follow up because the press conference. Yes. Is yes, yes, go ahead. I was expecting this. Go ahead. So now the issue is if um, uh, it is anything to go by, if it is anything to go by, um, uh, to me, at this stage, I consider it as an allegation that President Barrow has a hand in. This um, uh, issue that you are talking about, and then uh, the journalist from Party Network also is also raising it. Up. Sorry, and then some people are also making allegations outside that um, uh, some members of the National Assembly have taken a bribe from from the president. That's what some people are saying. But this needs to be proven. It has to be proven before.
more a competent monitor. But uh, in your own opinion, as a political a party leader, do you think this matter can be challenged at the court and a favorable decision be made in favor of the Gambian people? Well, it, it is clear. If, if citizens disagree and there's a controversy, and this is a, a major disagreement, a major controversy, uh, the settlement of that controversy is the courts. So if we feel that you know it has reached a level where no no oh, if we feel that there is a level let me turn this off completely sorry I, I don't like phones ringing when, when we are speaking let me turn off my own please can you turn off yours too uh, let us so so if we feel that we want to challenge it in, in the courts we will challenge in the courts in the courts of law if we have reached that possible we are we are studying a number of options. And at the end of the day, when we conclude our study of the options, you will know it's not going to be long. It's not going to be long. Perhaps, you know, we may tell one or two persons that this is what is happening and, you know, the whole world will know. So if there are options that we are studying, and I will not tell you what those options are, but suddenly we are not going to just hold a press conference and then fold our arms and then, you know, okay, doki doki, we move on. No, it's not going to be the case. You talk about section 229. 226 of section 9. 226 of section 9, yes. Yes. Yes, I'm aware. Go ahead. Yeah. What does it say? It says it includes. The alteration of the constitution includes. When you say include, it means that maybe something. You are making a mistake. Let me correct you there. Okay. Read section, section 9 of 226 of section 8. In this section, references to this constitution include references to any law that amends or replaces any of the provisions of this constitution. It did not say that, that replaces the entire constitution. Any of the provisions. So that still is dealing with only amending provisions of the 1997 constitution, but not a repeal or that's what Then the second one, to, uh, to the alteration of this constitution includes reference to the amendment, modification, or the enactment with or without amendment or modification of the constitution or any provision for the time being contained in this constitution again. The suspension or repeal or the making of different provision in lieu there are different provision again of the same constitution. It didn't say repeal of this constitution. So what I'm telling you is that nobody will come out and say specifically this is the section that repeals the constitution. It's not there. So, so my question is... Well, even if they do, yes, they will not be on any statutory legal ground. Yes, I'm question, sure people can say it. Yes, my question is, the constitution is not even against the policy agenda. Then one of the things that you can do is the second sector of the president is recent What was your question on the national development plan? That is a failed document. We said no, it's not a failed document. I, I, so you know, I, I don't, I don't recall that. Yes. I'm sure you didn't ask me that question. Yes. Yes. So, uh, bring, so bring back the newspaper yes. where you said I, yes. I said that. Yes. So the question is that the national development plan has one year to go, not more than 15 months now to go. And then you have started. Let me, let me just correct you there. I have made it very clear that this press conference has to do with only one thing. Yes. That is the constitutional referendum. You. If you have a question on that, I will answer. Yeah. I have answered all questions before in the past. Today, I'm willing to talk about only this. Thank you. I'm not talking about any, I don't, know, I don't want to be derailed. I don't want the importance of this event today to be subsumed by other events or other issues. So let us, let us be clear on all this. Today, I want to talk about the constitution and nothing more. Thank you. Okay, um, for coming back, Honorable, um, after going through your statement, yes. you 
were in the context of that next election, 2021, GMC government will lead and others will follow. Um, in the case you have been um, escorted to the state house, what would be your first mission? Because you said the constitution is a good one. Good. Let me put it to you. This constitution is not dead. We are not yet in 2021. A lot of things can happen before 2021. I have indicated in my statement that the constitution is not dead. It will continue to live. It's not dead. A lot of things will happen before now 2021 with regards to this constitution. You can be rest assured. As to victory, yes, we are going to win. Uh, but I don't want to talk too much on that. Because, uh, again, I don't want to also be derailed. So you and I can have an interview as to why I believe that it's GMC that will win the election. No. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I said. 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 Yes, Right. Yeah. No, 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 I'm finished. Let me finish. Then I want to make Muslim resign. Then I want to beg you, Muslim, when you die, Muslim resign. Fuck now, this marriage is not going to be. Media, you know, for now, Karaba Hotel, that one. It was a media event. Head now, lima, 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 wah on. As much as I time, but more. Fun game, now, con. Yen, fun game, now, con. Ask. No, let me answer. It's not a dialogue. Don't, don't, you know. You ask me, I'm answering. It's not like me and you an argument. What in order was lima buka wah more. Do diga. Now, con now government. Man, my resign as my papa. Do nekon na Minister of Interior, President Baro, mu terminate mu mu relieve me of my responsibility. Bakor na si lolo, wa idem mo kolat, purma saft man nation, madem at saft nation bi, bi magis the environment, bi magis the environment as ma papa, lolo mu for one, wa somala je my area, lema def si lobby as Minister of Interior, lolo mu na ko tonto, wa tei lima bu ko mo nyuwa tan aferi constitution bi, telera la na ko, wa na ko sa colleagues, yo mi wa na la ko, wa na nje fi. So so they were dealing with Lenin. Then I take it back. Correct. No 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 video. No video. Be mom about constitution bill. So question be amu dar at constitution bill. Why they want to do it? Because they don't know. So much. So much. Hold a jeh. Because they want. Because because they want to hold a jeh. They want to hold a jeh. Man act ni ni. Act ni ni. Ham ni ni. Ni ni. Kasen bakan. Gir. So hold a Gambia. Act ni baru ni dem kaso. Act man semua jemi boleh lima dek. Act Gambia ni sunjuk siap. Nous avons fait la constitution de la constitution. Donc, je vais vous dire que je vais vous réunir. C'est ce que je vais vous dire. C'est ce que je vais vous dire. Je suis venu. 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 Est-ce qu'il y a une question? Non, je ne suis pas. Ok, maintenant j'ai deux autres questions et c'est tout. Non, mais nous devons mettre un terme à cette question. Deux autres questions. Some of you have to go back and write. Yes, one, one and one more, yes. My final question will, of course, deal with the, issue, the two issues. Uh, and then we are, of course, supposed to be addressed by this draft, which was, of course, rejected by the, uh, by the lawmakers. And this has to do with uh, the simple majority and the issue of the term limit. Um, if there is no lock at all mm -hmm. to get this draft back to parliament, possibility of getting it to a referendum. Would you, what do you think should be done at least to address these two fundamental issues mm -hmm. before the 2016 election? About, about the... The simple majority and the issue of the two, two the term limit. Well, uh, like I indicated, the, the defeat of the bill in parliament was something none of us expected. We did not expect that the president, the, the government will send a bill and plan the defeat of the bill. It's, 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 it's shocking to all of us. So right now, we are reviewing, as I indicated, we are in the post-mortem now, post-mortem mode. We are reviewing the possibilities to that, the next steps that we will take. And we have not concluded reviewing the steps to take. But what, your question is very fundamental. The time limits and these things are, are, are the simple measures are extremely important. I believe that, um, I don't know what we will finally agree at the end. But my personal opinion is we should, we should still have time limits, no matter what. Even if the constitution do not work, you know, God forbid, but we think the constitution will come back. Uh, even assuming, 
assuming without conceding that the constitution does not come back again. We do not revive the constitution. I think there should be an act of parliament that should deal with you know, the issue of a time limit. We should, yes. somehow. somehow. I don't know how the modality for getting this, but there should be a law you know, that would do that. Uh, and also the, uh, the force pass to poll also should be reviewed. Okay. You know, what should be the nature of it, I don't know yet because we are, internal discussions are taking place. And when we conclude, I will let you know. Okay, last question. The, and that's the final one. Yeah, that's the final one. Yes. 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 So, Abu Bakr said he comes from the top management of today's newspaper. So now, as a legal practitioner, um, as an expert, we know your expertise outside the Gambia, we are in the car, in the car. So now, my last question is, the constitution, the draft constitution has been rejected at the parliament, and everybody in the world is talking about it. Any consequences? Oh. Yeah, any, any consequences? Yes. Well, I tell you, if if I were the the minister, if I were the minister of justice, yes. I present a bill in parliament like this, yes. and and I would resign. You would resign. Yes, I would resign. And uh, um, in fact, I will not allow myself to reach that point. If I suspect that this whole thing is a farce, it's just a mere facade. There is no reality, no truth, truth in it. I would uh, say goodbye a long time ago and just give my part. I will not even reach the point. I won't be the minister to promulgate. I will resign and go. And I will not say why I resign, but I'll just and leave them in peace. That is one thing. Second thing is, um, I think those who walk against this bill and those who are behind it, they will get their day. Their day is coming. And when that day comes, whatever God decides will happen on that day. Thank you very much. That's the end of it. Gentlemen, gentlemen I want to th and ladies, I want to thank all of you for coming. We, this is an unfolding event. We will continue to consult you as our own internal consultations continue. And we will let you know what the, uh, what the final conclusions would be. And for those of you who want you know, private, uh, private interviews, we can arrange that later. We can arrange that later. But I, I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. I see uh, all of you great journalists. This country has a great future. You know, I, I know all of you over the years. Uh, and and as, as for the fullest, my children who are here from the Fulani, uh, thank yeah. you for coming. If you are hungry, tell me. There's little food. Uh, the uncle has placed somewhere. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Wow. 
um, skin ci mom lañu gëna xamé nak skin care products ci mom lañu gëna xamé ñu ngi dox tamit bentay tamit ci ay dal man way man nak skin care moy sama specialty xam nga rek ci kene bu saxar kanam réglé lo def mu jek am nañ um, Patricia Reina Kiwi Eye the whole range light up gold um the tomatine i mean the list can just go on and on and on and on lepp lo xamne rek luy taral jigen la ci yoyu rek lañu dox skin care plus nak emu ngi ci gambia rek ñu nga united states ñu ngi gambia fi ba pare bu dey yangi anywhere in europe mun nañ la ko mail within 3 days rek ñetti fan rek nga jot say diw emu ci lu rek dañ la consult tamit ba lañ la jaay diw dinañ def a free consultation pour wax la rek exactly li nga xamne mo mengo ak sa kanam dinañ len wax tamit ne rek am nañ perfumes you know fragrances men shirts um accessories we do do dresses as well we do blouses i mean we do shoes name it we do them skin care plus 2020 is our year of perfection zero task fi nek ni rew mi fe ken morot fi task ken morot fi am problem kanam ken morot fi am problem mi pitcha boko amé dafa fek ni rek ñewu lo ci place bi fi immigration litigation family law personal injury licensing no win no fee contact us today at www.sk-solicitors.com <laughs> Yeah, actually, not to be like that. Basically, I'm going to be like that. 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 I'm Oh man, this is like a paradise. I know. I'm all in it. I saw what you have this place. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Trust me, I love this place. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I love this place, man. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. guest house Miss V Designer Outlet is the number one quality and affordable stop shop for all your needs. Get your evening dresses, suit and ties, office wears for both ladies and gentlemen, beach wears, sport wears, pure leather shoes for men, quality belts, bags, heels for all beautiful ladies, original perfumes, accessories and lot more.
find us at Kololi New Road opposite Gaddafi Mosque at the Aqua Preacher Station. Or call us on 295-3411 or 764-2486. Miss B Designer Outlet. Shop right, look good.